Sunday on Knight Rider. I don't do your bidding anymore. I do my own. Michael's services are for sale. What do you want done? When the underworld wants Kit and a deadly nerve gas, Sunday. Sunday on Knight Rider. What dreadful secret has driven Michael and Kit to a life of crime? We partners again. Butch and Sunday. Don't miss the shootout, Sunday. Production 58622, Night in Disgrace. This episode was written by Simon Muntner and directed by Harvey Laidman. It was originally aired on NBC Sunday night, 8 p.m. on November 18th, 1984. It was the 49th episode to air, but the 45th episode to be produced. So in terms of production order of the third season, Kit vs. Carr was first, Lost Night was second, Night in Disgrace was third and that'll be important here in a little bit and i'll tell you why the synopsis reads as follows michael is suspended from the foundation after a crook plants some evidence on him during a drug bust and we shall begin so we start supposedly in new orleans right um, in reality obviously they didn't film any of this episode in new orleans it was all filmed in the los angeles area the Catfish's Dixieland Bar, which you see in the background here, is actually on Ventura Boulevard. Here it is right here in Sherman Oaks. The, I'm not even going to try it, Rive Gauche Cafe, I have no idea. But you can see here the awning, right? It still says restaurant and bar there. But if you look here, this is the awning of the actual restaurant. All the uh, scenery department did was add this sign over top of the existing restaurant sign. So that's all you're looking at there. Okay, so right off the bat, we see something very, very special. This is the hero car. We actually see the monitor working in the hero car for the first and only time in the entire series. This is not an insert shot. This is actually the TV in the hero car working. So how did they do this? Well, clearly they had... Um, cables and i think we'll see maybe see some of the wires here in a second but they had this hooked up to a video feed i don't know if it was a vcr a beta player or um and or some other type of um connection but this actually worked in the hero car now um we talked to director harvey laidman about this many years ago and he said in those days we only did it two ways we did it by a burn-in which is what we normally see in Knight Rider, the close-up where they superimpose the image over the monitor screen. Or the other way is by photographing the monitor with a camera, and um, the camera that they used to photograph the monitor had to have a modified shutter um, that changed from the 30 frames a second to 24 frames a second. So he said um, the only thing he remembered about this is that he remembered it was uh, odd, that they were filming it this way because normally they did it via burn-in anyways back to the car here um so remember how i said at the beginning of this video this was the third episode produced after kit versus car and lost night so the hero car this is this is in terms of production order this is the first time the production really got to use the hero car so in kit versus car and in Lost Night, they were still building and tweaking the hero car. And that's why you really don't see it. I mean, you see the insert shots of the new dash from, from the insert dash that was on a soundstage. But you don't really see the hero car with the dash like this. You get a little glimpse of it in Kit versus Car, and you get a little glimpse of it in Lost Night, but you could tell that they were still building it. You know, in Kit versus Car, the labels were missing, and in Lost Night, you don't even see the dash. You, you kind of see it off camera. This is the actual premiere of the hero car in terms of the production order. So what you're looking at right here 
is the hero car at its absolute best. It was just, the, the construction of it was just finished, and everything works. Um, unfortunately, as many of you know, as productions go, you know, these are props, things get broken, they don't get fixed or replaced, and the hero car would suffer that same fate. So it's not going to be too much longer that that TV is not going to work anymore. And in fact, by season four, there's not even a monitor in there. They replace it with a, a, a gray or a silver like piece of cardboard. Um, so it's not even a working TV later. But here at the very beginning of the Hero Cars new life, we have everything working, including the TV. All right, so when we zoom in, if you look under here, you can see some of the wires underneath, just barely here. But you can see even the pods, all the labels are nice and crisp. There's nothing peeling. There's no labels missing. And again, that's all attributed to the fact that this is a, a brand new build at the time that this was being filmed. Okay. But one thing that they, I guess, didn't get right, this is still the hero car. But take a look up here. We've got the headliner just peeling away from the top of the car. It looks like they tried to hold it in with some adhesive right here and the adhesive is pulling away and stretching. But take a look. We've got a white wire right there. There's your white wire stretching right across there. There's one of the clips that holds it into the roof right there. White wire alert. All right. So then we move forward and we have Charles Pasirni and um, Charlie, we, we actually interviewed him in one of our previous episode commentaries, but we see him a few times in Knight Rider. We saw him back in a nice and decent little town. Uh, if you remember the scene towards the climax when uh, Granny turbo boosts over the uh, truck carrying all the produce, he's the driver of the truck. And then we see him in a more prominent role um, in Whitebird. He's one of, um, well, what's his name? Don, is his, is his name Donner? I can't remember, but he's one of the two bad guys in Whitebird. But here he is again um, in Night in Disgrace. All right, so let me move forward. This is the left-hand blind drive car. Now, you are not going to see the right-hand blind drive car in this episode at all. And the reason is very similar to the reason for the hero car, well, although we do see it here. But um, they were still building the right-hand blind drive car at the time Night in Disgrace was being filmed. So, in Kid vs. Car in Lost Night, the, the car that would become the right-hand blind drive car was still being used, but it was still in its Season 2 hero car configuration. So, those of you who followed the channel, followed us on Facebook, know that the original Season 1 and Season 2 hero car with the fancy dash and everything was basically gutted and converted into the right-hand blind drive car for season three, and that was done at George Barris's shop. At the time they were filming this, that car was still being constructed, so it's not being used here. Now, in Kit vs. Car, we do see the hero car, the season two hero car, um, soon to be the right-hand blind drive car. We do still see it as car, and if you watch Lost Night, you're going to notice a lot of scenes where they still use the hero car, even though you know, the kit's dash has supposedly been fixed. But we'll get over that whenever we get to the Lost Night episode. But uh, here, it's not even available for filming because they are still building it. It um, would premiere in the next produced episode, The Ice Bandits, which we've already covered. I know, it's confusing. We probably should have done these commentaries in production order. That would have made more sense. All right, moving on. So we're back at Flag Headquarters. This is a nice little touch here. And I can't remember if... We've seen this before, and I just never pointed it out, or if this is the first time. But right here on Devin desk, Devin's desk, there's a video phone, right? And it's just a nice piece of continuity because, you know, for, what, two years now on Knight Rider, we're in the third season, on for the first two years of the show, you know, Devin, like, talks to the camera, and it relays into Michael in, and Kit in the mon on the monitor of Kit. Um, but we never see really the other side of it. And um, it's nice they put a video phone here to imply that this is how Devin sees Michael when they're talking. So um, I'd be curious. Uh, why don't you guys do some research, figure out what uh, make and model video phone this is. That would be um, something neat to add to a collection one day. 
All right, and I just wanted to point this out. I wanted to point out Devin's tie, um, that he is such a fan of. I don't think this is. I'm gonna. I know I'm gonna get this wrong, especially for our friends over um, in Ireland or whatnot. This is not. I'm sure this isn't tennis. Is it like racquetball? I don't know. But still, I thought it was neat. Devin was wearing, you know, something besides just his normal striped ties. Okay, so now we move forward. We are. Um, you know, Michael has been suspended. He's going to find Kit. Kit is currently parked in the Universal Studios tram garage on the back lot of Universal Studios. Now, um, this is the facility. You know, at Universal Studios, many of you who have been there know they have trams, these, these um, trains that you can pay to take a tour of the back lot. This is the building, the garage, where those trams are serviced. Um, We've seen this tram garage before on Night Rider a couple times. So remember this scene from Goliath where, um, you know, he's getting the molecular bonded shell sprayed on him. This is inside the tram garage. But probably more famously, um, we see it in, um, well, actually, ironically enough, we see it in Goliath Returns. And it happens to be this location where Kit's uh, hung up like a side of beef. Okay, so then we move forward. We're still in the tram garage here. And take a look at this. Again, going back to what we were talking about with the functionality of the hero car and how everything worked in this episode. So Michael reaches in for his bag and Kit's dash self-activates. But look at this. Not only does, you know, this turns on, but watch the countdown here. See how the countdown, see it's off turns on. And if you watch the video, the countdown actually works and it counts down properly. Someone, the person who built the dash for this hero car actually, you know, put some effort in and made this countdown. They easily could have just made it turn on and off. Um, and something else interesting to note, the, the speedometer seems to be stuck at 907 miles per hour um, here and throughout the rest of the episode, it's in the 900 range. So I'm not sure why, but Okay, so moving on, we've got um, John Considine playing Boyd LaSalle here, and we've got Ken Ferre as Danton. Both of these folks would return in season four episodes. John Considine obviously um, returns as Philip Nordstrom in Night of the Juggernaut, and then Ken Ferre returns in Redemption of a Champion. But here they are in, um, here's uh, John's first appearance in Knight Rider. All right, so then we move forward, and we've got... Um, uh, Boyd LaSalle looking in on, you know, spying on the foundation. And um, does this case look familiar to you at all? Well, it probably should. This is the same briefcase used in, in uh, the climax of Night of the Drones. There we go. So David Halston uses it to control the drone cars. Um, and we can see here, there's that toggle switch with the, the lights that blink back and forth that say activate, which we actually see a close-up of in uh, this particular episode. In fact, here it is. So there we go. So there's the close-up of that toggle with the activate. And if we go back to here and we look here, there's the toggle right there. So this is a reused uh, prop from Night of the Drones. Uh, in reality, this came from modern props, where most of this, the futuristic sci-fi props from not only Knight Rider, but many of the shows of the day came from. All right, so now we have the commercial break. We're back. We have Chuck Wally Burton driving Kit, and we get this great... The only reason I point this out is because of how prominent this uh, Volkswagen was in Season 2, starting in Blindspot. This is footage reused from Blindspot, and... Um, and the, uh, the in-joke that this Volkswagen shows up just in, like, every scene of that episode. And then Chuck hits the ski mode, and instead of doing a new ski mode, they just reuse the footage from Chariot of Gold right here. All right, so now we see the inside. This is the uh, dedicated insert car for Season 3. And you can see it's, you know, it's a little rough around the edges. We've got an ill fitting uh, overhead. We've still got those holes in the trim right there. Um, but take a look at this. We're going to move forward and Kit ejects Chuck out of the car. Now, this is, they actually use two different cars for this scene. So 
what you're seeing here is not that insert car. Now, if you remember back in uh, Knights of the Fast Lane, we talked about the insert car and how it had a working auto roof. It was the only Knight Rider car that ever had a working auto roof. This is not that car. How do we know that, especially from this angle? The um, car with the working auto roof did not have a real T-top with a handle with the uh, hooks or pins on the side. Um, and we can also see, you see right here, just barely, see how there's a divot right here? What that is, is there's fishing line tied, and that fishing line is bending the rubber um, of the T-top there. So that fishing line is what's holding that uh, T-top up right now. So we have this ejection scene, and then we switch here, and now look, all of a sudden, now we're at the insert car. This is only the... The, there's only two episodes where we see the working auto roof, Knights of the Fast Lane, and this episode here. Um, but you can see here, there's no handle, there's no pins or hooks, um, and we can see here the hinge that was built specifically for this uh, car. So in this particular scene, this is the insert car, but um, you know you see the T-top close and then you see kit take off. But you notice there's no um, there's there's no blind drive seat in this car. They actually have it hooked to the camera truck right now, and and the car's in neutral. They close this and then they just pull the car out of frame, and um, that's what you see. But again, one of the very rare times we actually see the um, season three insert car from the outside. Normally, you only see the filming of the inside. Okay. All right. So then we see a close up of uh, Michael supposedly analyzing the fire mountain chemical facility plans but did you ever stop and look at exactly what he's looking at so we have body shop a paint bay and a gasoline island so clearly this is not the fire mountain chemical facility so now michael pulls up to attempt to steal kit and if you look in the driver's seat here we have uh hal frizzle who makes yet another cameo in Knight Rider, part of the Knight Rider stunt crew. He always seems to show up in the background here. So now we move forward and Michael is at this door getting ready to go in and steal kit, supposedly at the foundation. This is still that Universe Studios uh, tram garage. And I wanted to um, offer you this, I guess, meta moment. So in 2011, we went to Universal Studios and we found our way up to this very building and we took this picture. This door right here, this is the door that you see right here that Hasselhoff is um, opening. Right here. Okay? Now, the meta moment doesn't end there because that in and of itself is really cool. But take a look at this. In 2000 and eight this picture was taken see that door in the background this is the same location and this is our original night rider car one of our original night rider cars before we acquired it obviously so when we go back and we look at this knowing where the scene was filmed and thinking 24 years later, our car is sitting outside of this, and then we'll eventually acquire this car. It's just a really cool, it was a really cool moment to stand there and to be there, but then to know that this was also a filming location just kind of ties it all together. But All right, so let's keep going. All right, so here we are. Um, now we're inside the tram garage, and I believe if we go back to Goliath Returns, and here we go. So in the background here, that see that door through Kit's window? That is this door right here. So it's the, Kit's in the same location where he was being um, hung like a side of beef, but um, here we are having uh, Michael go in to steal him. All right, so then you see this insert shot of the locking LEDs and then the unlocking. If you look here, there's actually, it's not color changing LEDs, there's actually two rows of LEDs. The green are on top, the, blue, uh, the red are on the bottom. This, many of you have asked this, this was not a feature on any of the original cars. This was an insert door. It was, it was a door that was not on a car that was 
filmed specifically or that was that was crafted specifically for these leds all right so we move forward michael steals kit opens the tram garage door um, and when we see the semi in the background this is um you know the only time we see the semi in this episode but there it is in the background all right, so we move forward. Now we're at Boyd LaSalle's estate. This is the same location as the escape mansion in the Topaz Connection. And we go over this mansion and the history of it in the Topaz Connection. But it was, I believe it was destroyed by a fire. And now there's another bigger mansion on its, on its, um, on the grounds. But um, yeah, this is a, a reused location from the Topaz Connection. All right, so then we move forward and we've got Michael telling Kit to move off the grass right after they turbo boost in. In the background, you've got Al Jones here, part of the Knight Rider stunt crew, and then we have Andy Gill, Jack Gill's brother right there. I don't know who these two people are. And then we've got this guy who you'd be forgiven if you thought was William Daniels, but it isn't. But I do believe this is, um, I think this is the same guy that we see on the parole board at the beginning of Brothers Keeper. There's a parole board scene for Peter McCord at the beginning of Brothers Keeper and um, this guy is sitting at that parole board. Okay, moving forward. Now inside of Boyd LaSalle's estate, this is actually on stage one at Universal. This is that staircase set that they built that we discussed in um, the Ice Bandits, I believe, is when we went over it. But this this set was new for season three and it appeared in a number of episodes in season three and season four. So now Michael returns to the foundation to break in. This is not, none of this was filmed at Arden Villa, which is the actual location for flag headquarters. This is some wall somewhere else, probably at universal somewhere. Um, and then this scene right here is also, you know, not on location at Arden Villa. This is a, a stage. And I believe, I'm fairly confident that this is actually the outside wall of Devin's office. You know, you never see, you see the windows from the inside, but you never see from the outside except right here. All right, so now Devin, back in his striped tie, is opening the safe, looking pretty distressed. Um, curious if this safe ever appears again. Not Not up close, but... We'll have to keep an eye out in future episodes when we see this bookcase. Can we see the outline of this safe in future episodes? We'll check it out. And then Devin shot. Oh. All right, after commercial break, we come back and we now have uh, this footage. This is actually stock footage from season one. We've never saw it in season one, but this was filmed for season one. This is, I believe, the general purpose stunt car, which, you know, died. It had an, er had an early death in season one, but I believe that's the car we're looking at here. So we pull up. This is the hero car, and I'm going to point it out again because there's been a lack of it. There is the white wire in the hero car. Now, we already said that, but this is a much better view of it. You can actually see it above the overhead console, too. Look at that beautiful, long stretch of white wire. Doesn't that just make you want to wrap yourself up in it and care for it and nurture it? Oh, anyways, all right. Um, so now we move forward again, and... Again, they're they're working with this brand new hero car and the functionality. So take a look at the startup sequence. First, we have the upper light of the power light come on. Then we have some of the speedometer, the digits on the tack and these digits. Then it lights up a little bit more. And then finally, it all lights up. So, you know, it was, again, it wasn't just off and on. There was a sequence to the power up of this dash. And then once all this is powered up, these uh, countdowns begin. All right, so this is it's still that hero car. We see Hasselhoff once again not wearing his proper comm link, but uh, an, a different watch there. Uh, it seems like he wore not a comm link more than he wore his comm link. All right, so then Kit's approaching the Fire Mountain Chemical Facility. There's our yellow Volkswagen rabbit that we've uh, pointed out in a number of episodes. And there's nothing 
interesting to point out here, except I always love the determination on this security guard's face. You know, Kit comes blasting through, flies by, and then they zoom in on this guy, and he's driving in his golf cart at three miles an hour thinking he can catch up with him, and he's just so determined. All right. So then Kit crashes through the, uh, the wall there, and these barrels, I believe, are leftover set dressing from Kit versus Car right here whenever cars turbo boosting through the barrels um, on the back of this truck. I believe those are probably leftover props, ones that didn't get destroyed when they jumped um, through the back of the truck. And then here we go again, see? 911 miles an hour. That's all right. All right, so then we see um, the new power button on, uh, on Kit. This is actually a close-up of the insert dash, not the hero car. But um, it's interesting because in reality, this is an LED, it isn't a push button, but they make it appear like it's a push button here. All right, so then we've got this scene. Now, I remember even as a kid, whenever I saw this scene and you'd see Kit, you know, skidding by the camera real fast, sparks flying off of him, I thought, well, why does Kit have these, the Trans Am ground effects here, right? Um, he doesn't. He's wearing the, the rubber shell is on top of the car here. You can see the gap here. You can see the gap in, over the windshield. This is the rubber shell that they've placed over this car. In this scene, the way it, it flies by, it almost looks like Kit has the, uh, the, the 83 and 84 style Trans Am ground effects package, but that's not the case here. There were no cars used on Knight Rider that had that ground effects package. All right, so now we're back in the insert car. And we can see something funky happening. The the uh, overhead here actually has a cutout right here. And I think it's exposing some of the mechanism for the auto roof right there. It's hard to sell, tell because it's, um, it's in the shadows. But if you look down here, we've got the overhead or the lower console, but there's it's just the shell. There's no electronics in it, which was normal for this insert car. We never would see the um the dash in this car so it was all just dummy and blanks and cutouts like this all right so then we move to boyd and danton's uh helicopter this is the same helicopter we've seen a million times in night rider we'll see it again um, going back all the way to first the first season in just my bill and okay so this scene would have been a perfect opportunity to use the right hand blind drive car but it was again not available so what car do we have here? This is not the left-hand blind drive car either. This is actually the tan A-pillared Knight Rider car. And actually, if you look under Hasselhoff's arm, you can kind of see the tan right there against the black of the, of the windshield frame. There's the tan right there. This is the tan A-pillared car. And what do we see when we look in here? We see some kind of a, a string here. We do know that some of these cars had a manual choke cable. That could be what we're looking at right there. We've got the round stunt wheel, and then right here, there's a hand. So this car, someone is driving this car from the passenger side just until Hasselhoff gets in, right? He's running up beside it. I can't remember if this is actually Hasselhoff or a stunt guy, probably a stunt guy. But he's coming up beside it. He's got the steering wheel, and then it cuts, and we have Hasselhoff getting in, and now it's the hero car. So it goes from this where you can see the stock dashboard to the hero car. All right, so now we move towards the end um, and we see this is the first time we see the flag license plates. And we actually own, they made a number of these um, backups and whatnot. We actually own two of these license plates, which we'll show you now. So, um, I don't know if the ones we own are this exact one that we see here, but they were definitely used at some point in the series. So this is the first time we see this. We see this, the flag license plates again. Um, I know we see them in Out of the Woods in Season 4. There's probably a couple other times we see it. Okay, well, that concludes Night in Disgrace. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, what's next? What's the next episode? Dead of Night. So Dead of Night's interesting. It had the potential to be a good episode, and it still is in many ways, but it kind of uh, loses steam when they start reusing a ton of footage from the pilot. But we'll get to that next time. As always, 
Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. We appreciate it, and we'll talk to you soon. And now, while we listen to Joe's selection of Knight Rider music that we received directly from Don Peak himself, we'd like to thank these Patreon supporters. Look at you guys scrolling up the screen to my right. Wait a minute, how can you tell which side is my right since you can't see me because I'm not on camera? Oh well, you know what I mean. We are featuring these fine supporters at our Knight Rider prop restorer level. Thank you very much for your support. And for those of you at the Knight Rider History Hunter level, we're recognizing you right now in the description. Now, if you enjoyed seeing this golden nugget of Knight Rider history being rescued from obscurity, then please consider supporting us on Patreon. Your support would empower us to bring you even more of these historical nuggets. We are the Knight Rider Historians. Till next time, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.